Oh, geez, Judy, it's really hot. And you know what else is hot? A new episode of Garden Time. Welcome to Garden Time. And you know where it's not hot is under, undercover at your favorite independent garden center. We're out here at Portland Nursery on Stark Street, but I have to say there's all kinds of coverage spaces at garden centers everywhere that'll keep you cool. And also coming up in the show today, we'll take you out to Swan Island Dahlias to show you some cool varieties of dahlias. We're also going to show you how to fix that broken fence before winter returns. But first, some cool statuary at Little Baja. So I'm standing here with Jared and we are at Little Baja and today we're going to be talking about statuary, Jared, because, yeah. you know, as a gardener, of course I love the plants, that's what my passion is, but there's so many little spaces in a yard that can really be dramatically changed with something as simple as a statue. You're right. It's amazing with the right piece how it can accent your garden. Well, now let's talk, in the selection available, and you guys have a huge selection here, but in that selection, some of them are just fun. They're just, you know, cute, you like them. But then there's also a lot of statuary that has some specific meaning. So let's talk about that a little bit. You know, I see an awfully lot of, of the, the saints, you know, a CC, stuff like that. Sure. So let's talk about that. Well, St. Francis, um, he was a patron of ecology and animals, uh -huh. believed to be able to communicate with the animals. St. Francis saw God within all creation and believed to communicate with all the animals. I think St. Francis serves us as a reminder today to maybe reduce our creature comforts, live more simply, and uh, love silence more readily. Well, and that's lovely, and I, I couldn't agree with you more, but I also think that you know, a statue of St. Francis was also, it, it, it harkens to that part of us that loves nature in the sense of animals as well as gardening, so it's a great combination. Very true. And I, you know, I see an awful lot, too, of the, uh, the more India and Asian statues sitting around, too. Sure. Those also have a very rich history of what they mean, don't they? Oh, they sure do. Um, we get a lot of questions that ask, you know, what does this Buddha mean? And really it breaks down to, what does this pose represent? Because yeah. there's so many different poses. And we carry a lot of the more popular ones, the happy Buddhas, yeah. the meditation Buddha. So really, um, any Buddha is really going to accent your space and really turn it into that tranquil sanctuary you might be going for. But uh, Either, you know, either way, they're all really nice and they're going to accent your garden. Display. Well, and, and we were talking earlier today, Jared, about a space that you went to and it was just a very small space with gravel. And what did you add there to change that? You know, we brought a big, tall standing Buddha and it was amazing how it transformed this gravel lot yeah. into a tranquil rock garden for yeah. meditation. You know, I love that because that's so true. Sometimes it's just, you know, you'll look in your garden and you'll see a space and you'll think, what do I put there? What plant do I put there? And sometimes a statue, a, a lantern, makes all the difference in the world. Oh, it really pulls it all together. So Jared, you know, I do see a lot of Kuan Yin statues around here. Mm -hmm. Those also have some specific meanings. Oh, they sure do. Uh, Kuan Yin was the goddess of mercy and compassion, um, akin to the way a mother feels for a child. Yeah. You know, a little more fiercely protective and fiercely loving than we associate with the word compassion. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. And what about animals? I mean, I, I know that they might have some specific meanings to people. Sure, you know, um, sometimes if someone has a, a pet that might pass, um, they can mark that site in their yard that they're kind of yeah. dedicated to that animal. You know, but they're great just to add to the garden and it really brings that spirit right to your garden, yeah. that, uh, that totem of energy from that animal that now exists in your, in your place. So some folks associate with a wolf, sometimes it's a bear, uh, but either way, when that place in the garden, it really brings that energy right to their place. So, you know, and the fun thing too is you can, you can really pick out, you have such a great selection here, first of all, it's really amazing. So you can really pick out the one that perfectly fits your space. Right, you'll know when you see it. All right, well, if you're looking for a statue for your garden, come on down to Little Baja, you can go to gardenname.tv, we'll take you over to their website, pick out that statue that absolutely defines exactly what you want in your garden space. Thanks a lot, Jerry. All right, thanks. I can build. I can build. I can build, and you can too. Building a career in the construction industry can kick off a lifetime of security, and the Northwest College of Construction can help you start that career. 
Apprentices get paid to learn on the job and receive a full scholarship at NWCOC. Northwest College of Construction will teach you how to build. We can build. And you can too. Apply online at nwcoc.com. 1,112? 1,113? William, what? what are you counting? I'm counting all of our wonderful friends on Facebook. And we invite everyone to go to Facebook and like us and follow us. All you have to do is go to gardentime.tv and hit the Facebook icon, which is in the top right-hand corner. It's the best place to get the most updated information on Garden Time. So all you have to do is click us and like us. The fields are in bloom and looking beautiful. We welcome everyone to come visit us here at Swan Island Dahlias. Stop by Swan Island Dahlias in Canby and stroll the 40 acres of blooms. And don't forget the Dahlia Festival the last weekend in August and Labor Day weekend. During the festival, you can see over 400 cut flower displays, enjoy specialty foods, and see flower arranging demonstrations. Swan Island Dahlias is located in Canby, just minutes south of Portland. Come, Come see us! us. Well, it is a great delight of mine to be here with Kirk, and we are at Seabright Gardens, and we're going to be talking today about wonderful blooming plants that are happening, and some that aren't even blooming at this late time of the summer, right? Yes, yes, ones that look great well, right now. Well, let's jump in. Well, yeah, sounds great. Uh, which one do you want to talk about? Why don't we do, this is beautiful. This here, this is McFadden's Lace Fern. It's actually, uh, the Lace Fern is uh, native to the North Pacific Islands, like Hawaii. That's the closest islands. Wow. To, the, to us, but actually it's really hardy here in our gardens here in the Northwest. And um, it's an evergreen fern, but when it gets down to the single digits, it will burn the fronds off. But, but yeah, so, and then I'm off. assuming that it's not a runner so much as a clumper? Exactly, nice. yeah, it clumps. Yep, it's yeah, a beautiful. nice clumper and nice texture and form to it, so. And then, yeah. you know, all of us know hostas because mm -hmm. we, we love to come out here and see so many. This one oh, is yeah. quite large and beautiful. Yeah, this one, uh, it's really getting some yellow from the uh, from the summer heat on the edges. It's nice thick leaves. It's hard for the slugs to drill through this leaf. It's like leather. Nice. And uh, it's getting that nice yellow edge coming on from this sun and the summer heat. So. And there are hostas that bloom. I, I understand yes, that. Yes, absolutely. But, but yeah. this one either has it yet or still will in the future. But uh, even this the, is lovely. It just finished blooming, so I clipped the blooms clipped off them right of it. off. Yeah, yeah it that's bloomed a, last month. There's right, there's one really hosta here blooming now. Right that, there. Uh, this is a stained glass. It's a fragrant flowered one. And the nice thing about the fragrant flowered hostas is mm -hmm. they put on a lot of new leaves in the summer months. They like really? the summer heat. The uh, origins, the genetic origins are from the subtropics down in southern China. And this is a leaf that came out in the winter. It has some winter dam uh, damage from the spring, from yeah. the hail. And so you can just take these leaves off because you've got all these nice new oh. ones coming now that, are, that look a lot better than uh, the one that was damaged this spring, so. Beautiful. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm falling more and more in love with dark foliage plants. This one is stunning. Yeah, this, this hibiscus here, it's, it's, it's uh, nice because it has the dark, the new, the new growth is that dark maroon red, and um, the, the older leaves get green, but the flowers are blooming now in the garden. They like the summer heat. It's a starry, starry night, this one, this variety here. And they really do, especially this variety of the hibiscus family, they really do bloom late in the year, don't yes, they? Yes, this is their peak right now. Nice. Right in the heat of summer, and they just love this, the summer heat. And I fell in love with this plant, Kirk, yeah. at, from you having it here yeah, years yeah. and years ago. Yeah. Tell me about it. This is a Roscoe, it's cinnamon sticks because of the uh, nice cinnamon colored stem, uh, stems it has. But it, it doesn't really come up until late spring, sometimes not even until June. This year it came up a little early for some reason, which is odd because we had such a cold, cool exactly. spring. So I was surprised to see it come up, but it, sometimes you think you lost in the garden and it comes up. Um, the bulbs, it's like the rhizomes are like a, kind of like a dahlia yeah. actually. And, um, but they, they come up late and then they start blooming now. Here's the blooms of this one. And it'll keep just throwing out, flushing out blooms until it gets cold late, late fall, so. And I have to tell you that mine made a lovely clump over about three years, it just kept clumping out bigger and bigger. It was such Great. a beautiful. Yeah, that's exactly what they do. Yeah, they handle uh, sun well to nearly full shade. Full shade, so, yep. yeah, yeah. And of course, we, we would be remiss to not mention this beautiful family. Yeah, the yeah, Arbutalons. Yeah. Yeah, the Arbutalons are great. They, they uh, start blooming here. Actually, they started blooming this spring, but they, they like the heat and they will continue blooming until, um, until the first hard frost. And you also have some wonderful thing happening today, don't you, here at the nursery? Yeah. The, 
jewel box sale for Cascade Nursery Trail. Wonderful. There's six nurseries here, and we also have um, Pudding River wine cellars Ooh. that are here and, and a food vendor. So, so many reasons to come out exactly. and celebrate. It's a great day to come down <laughs> here, yeah. Well, for yeah. more information, we always invite you to go to gardentime.tv. We'll click over their website, gather up all that information, and then come out and buy some wonderful late summer blooming plants for your garden. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. For our tip this week, it's all about saving water. So for tonight's dinner, we just steam some vegetables. So what we're gonna do is save that water and to use in the garden. You know, that water is going to be nutrient rich because of the vegetables. So all we're gonna do is let it cool down and then we're gonna come out to the deck and add it right to the pots. So saving water and adding nutrients to the plants, that's our tip of the week. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Do you want to be green? Do the easy stuff first. Hi, I'm Sarah from Portland Nursery. The U.S. House Energy and Commerce Committee says for every dollar spent on a shade tree, you can save $5 on cooling, blocking the penetrating heat in the summer and allowing the warm rays through in the winter. Dollar for dollar, there's no better energy and money saver than a good, deciduous shade tree. Portland Nursery's professionals can help you make the perfect selection. Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Standard TV and Appliance asks, what do you want in new appliances? Do you want GE's gas, electric, convection, induction, stainless steel, slate, French door, Energy Star, top load, front load, high efficiency, or huge capacity? I want it all. Yeah, I want everything. Refresh and save with GE Cafe. Upgrade your kitchen and save up to $1,500 when you buy four GE Cafe appliances. Standard TV and Appliance. Enjoy a summer of art and color. Visit the Oregon Garden for Art in the Garden now through September 30th. See outstanding and inspired art that represents both traditional and modern styles carefully placed throughout the garden. See the combination of beautiful plants and great art as you stroll the gardens. Just pick up your map at the visitor center on your next visit. For details on Art in the Garden and a schedule of all our summer events, go to OregonGarden.org. Welcome to Blooming Junction, where it's easy to connect with nature. At Blooming Junction, you'll find beautiful, healthy plants, good, fresh food, and a place to regain peace and calm in your life. We have an unsurpassed collection of unique and distinctive plants and the expertise to help any gardener be successful. And we feature Blooming Advantage plants. Come check out Blooming Junction for an inspiring experience in the garden or in the kitchen. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens. I am at one of my favorite gardens to be in the summer. I'm at Swan Island Dahlia's in Canby with Nick. And Nick, it is beautiful out here as always. Really, really nice right now, right? Just getting that new burst of fresh new blooms without a lot of old blooms on the plants. It's really kind of the time that I like the best. Is oh, the sure. Everything looks fresh and, fresh and new. Uh, so we invite everyone to come out because the fields are open. But I wanted to talk today about all the different flower types of dahlias. I don't know of any other flower that has so many different types. I mean, look at this one. <laughs> this is one of the big daddies. Um, um, I, I don't know the name. Emery Paul. Okay, and then this little tiny one, and they're both dahlias. Right, they come in so many different sizes, shapes, styles, heights. Some grow, you know, 12 inches high, some grow six feet tall. Every variety has its own unique characteristic. Yeah, can you call out some of these, and maybe some of your favorites, but look at that red one. Yeah, now that's what we call uh, Red Devil. It's a cactus style, and they have the long spiky petals. Yeah, it's a cactus style. It's just a classification by the American Dahlia Society. And then you can get into collarette types, which are an open centered with a collar around them. Um, these are a decorative, which is more of a, a called a formal deck. Uh, Waterly style, probably the, the number one arranging type flower for arrangements. Arranging, uh, it makes it easy and neat style. <laughs> uh, people just seem to flock to those for arranging. You have an unusual wow, look uh, at that. orchid style, mm -hmm. which is, that's honka, it's an orchid style, it's been around quite a while because of the petals all go to a point, but there's only one row of petals, so it's so, a little... So different, <clears throat> I mean, that looks like some kind of a daisy, I mean, I would say maybe right, cast a daisy kinda, or something. Right, then you have like anemone styles, which are a, 
kind of a pin cushion with a row of pedals around the outside. Um, and you can get into where you get lacinated, where the pedals are split on the ends, where they've been like, like sheared a little bit. Uh, they really, I mean, there's cactus styles, decorative styles, but in each cactus and decorative, there's different inner, inner varieties and inner types that they can classify them on down for people to show them in shows. They get mm. really technical about oh, I bet. size and what classification they should go into and color, color classifications. You know, this one, and this one's kind of an unusual one when you showed Emery Paul. This, oh, is actually a, this is actually a cousin oh. from that one. Once in a while you get genetic sports mm -hmm. where they'll rarely change color, but this has the, the magenta stripe in it that came from that one, but the plant itself turned into what they call a variegated with the stripe wow. in it. So they're both have the same plant characteristics, same size bloom, uh, same tubers basically looking at them, but it just has a different color in them. Wow. Is there any color that you're striving to get? You know, they're trying to get like the blue rose or the... Always trying to get blue dahlias. Yeah. That's, that's the, the magic thing. And, <laughs> you know, we get into things that we call like, we call this beautiful. It's a bluish lavender, you mm -hmm. know. So anytime you can get something that's close to the blues, and put blue in the name and help sell them a lot. <laughs> this is one of our favorites that we plant right here oh, it's so, so people can see it. Because a lot of types of dahlias, I many times like the plant as much as the bloom. Hmm. Because if you get a nice plant that's very stocky and easy to contain and bushes out really well and then puts your bloom on top, it's very attractive in the garden. Sure. So some flowers make great, great show flowers or great cut flowers but don't have the near attractive plant. Mm. So Blutiful is one that just, it's a great cut flower, it's a great plant, wow. uh, it's stocky and sturdy, and it's one of my favorites. Ah, one to remember. <clears throat> well, you know, for home gardeners, what should we be doing for our, our dahlias in our garden right now? Well, right now, basically, you know, we're getting into the warmer weather, so you always would watch for spider mites, which mm. start on the bottom of the plants. And if your bottom leaves are turning yellow, then you may definitely need to spray for mites, but extremely important to heavy water this time mm. of year. <clears throat> much better to water one time a week and water it eight inches down than to go out every morning at five minutes with a hose sure. because people say they water them every day but they're not blooming right. Well, that uh, water doesn't go down deep enough to the tubers and if, if they can't absorb proper moisture, you'll get a kind of a green plant that goes in dormancy uh, and just sure. looks healthy and looks and stays there but very, very few bloom. But make sure the plants that got full sun too to, to get more blooms. Um, make sure you cut the old blooms off. Okay. Everywhere you cut the dahlia, it branches out more. So you get more, nice. more stems and that's more That's the best blooms. part. <laughs> <laughs> and I know the festival is coming up. So that's the last weekend of um, August and Labor Day weekend. weekend. Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Ah, and things will be going on. I know you have classes. You can see all the beautiful cut flower displays. Yeah, we're 15,000 blooms indoors, wow. professionally arranged, uh, like 400 and some arrangements. We do uh, talks on growing dahlias, uh, talks on arranging dahlias. Uh, we have a tuber dividing uh, Ooh, demonstration. Tuber dividing is really quite simple once you see it <laughs> in hand. Uh, it, you know, we do drawings, we do pictures and stuff, and it, it, people sometimes don't get it, but if you can ever see it done right in front of you, it, it's really a lot easier than, than what sometimes people think. So then we have, you know, fresh cut flowers available, food vendors are here. Um, we're going to have live music this year. Oh, fun. Um, so it's a big, you know, a lot of picnic tables, a lot of places to sit and enjoy your lunch. Uh, just a great day to come, come out and enjoy the yeah. walk through the fields of flowers. We have pathways for you to stay on and walk down and look at all the varieties in bloom. And that way you can you can go to the inside arra inside arrangements and see what the flower looks like. But sometimes you're not attracted to the flower as much on the plant, mm -hmm. maybe as you are in arrangement. And sometimes you're more attracted to the one on the plant than you know. It can be vice you versa. Gotta you gotta see may, it all. Yeah, you gotta see it all. You, that way you can compare how they grow. Because you may walk down there and think it's a a three foot tall, tall plant and walk out and it's six oh, or seven feet right. and you're going, I don't want it that tall. Some people ask, the new thing I think in landscaping is you get shorter varieties. Right, so right. We, we have a section that we grow a lot of, uh, you know, three foot and under plants, which are easy to take care of. So much to see, just so much to see. And really to bring the family out because there's places to picnic. You can bring a blanket, bring the kids, bring the camera and yeah, come out definitely. and talk to all the staff because it's really um, a fun plant to have in your garden and to have cut flowers inside too. So come out and see Nick and everybody here. Thanks so much. Right, thanks, Judy. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. When the weekend hits, I would so much rather be hiking in the gorge or day tripping to the beach than spending all day buying a car. But when we decided to get a new Outback at Capital Subaru, we couldn't believe how smooth and quick the process was. They found us the perfect road trip car in no time. 
We were even able to get a hike in before sunset. The Subaru A Lot to Love event is on at Capital. Hurry in now to lease the new 2018 Subaru Outback 2.5i, just $178 per month. Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. The fields are in bloom and looking beautiful. We welcome everyone to come visit us here at Swan Island Dahlias. Stop by Swan Island Dahlias in Canby and stroll the 40 acres of blooms. And don't forget the Dahlia Festival the last weekend in August and Labor Day weekend. During the festival, you can see over 400 cut flower displays, enjoy specialty foods, and see flower arranging demonstrations. Swan Island Dahlias is located in Canby. Just minutes south of Portland. Come, come see us! us. A destination farm and garden market featuring the very best each season has to offer. Smith Berry Barn offers seasonal farm fresh fruits and vegetables and specialty herbs and perennials. Visit the historic barn for distinctive gifts, gourmet foods, and homemade milkshakes. Right now we have fresh picked or pick your own berries ready in our fields. Here's what we have to offer this week. Centrally located off of Shoals Ferry Road between Sherwood and Hillsboro. Smith Berry Barn, growing good taste from the ground up. So you know we have a great product that we're going to be sharing with you today. It's uh, from the company called Sturdy Fence Post Brackets, and I'm here with, with Chuck. And Chuck, you are the owner and the co-creator of this, right? Co-inventor, co-creator. Sure. So tell me, first of all, tell me what's it for? It puts uh, a bracket on a fence post that's either broken or just leaning. Um, if there's dry rot around the bottom and you don't, you don't have to throw the old post away. Yeah, yeah. And which makes sense because a lot of times fence posts aren't ruined all the way up and down. It's just that, that break or that crack or that rotting area that makes them weak. That's So true. this could save a lot of time and money, couldn't it? <laughs> oh, a lot of time and money. I'm 73 years old. It takes me a half hour from start to finish. To do the whole thing. To do the whole thing. So I see a lot of stuff sitting here. It doesn't, and this doesn't take a whole bunch of tools and things, just a few things. Tell me what it is that's in Post hole digger, and okay. you can borrow your neighbor's post hole digger uh -huh. and actually have them help you. Um, a little stir stick, a uh, level to make sure it's plumb, a hammer, pair of gloves, a 60 pound bag of uh, uh, concrete mix, a drill, some 3 8 by 2 and a half inch lag screws, the, uh, a few of the uh, galvanized six penny nails, and then a sturdy fence post bracket, and then a bracing pole with a bracing stake. Empty bucket if you need it uh, to haul water. We happen to have a hose here, so it's gonna be real quick and clean. And so to do all this, we're gonna actually have the homeowner come on in. Come on in, Sherry. And she's gonna start finishing up the digging just to show how really easy this is. And we'll be back in a couple minutes and show you the completed project. Well, and with that, Sherry has finished digging the hole, which I think is probably the hardest part of this, really. It is. So now tell me about what, what happens next. Well, we have a concrete ball down here, and it weighs about 60 pounds, sometimes up to 80 pounds. Uh -huh. The only part that's wrong with this fence is post right there. is right there where yeah. the dry rod is. The rest of it is still good and solid. So this comes out, it misses the old concrete ball. Well, see, I wondered, when I looked down there, she's not digging by the post because there's concrete there. So that's this, correct. it says why? It does. Okay. And that's the reason we invented this, is not to have to dig out this old concrete yeah. ball. Yeah. Yeah, so then this, because again, like we've said already, this part of the post is fine. It's the part down here that is rotted and often True. broken. Yep. This saves that whole dilemma. Yeah. So now tell me about this fence. Show me what's wrong with it. Actually show me and what I would do next to install the We've loosened this board, so we're just uh -huh. going to take it off. Okay. And well, then, I saw it wiggling already when you sure. pulled it off. <laughs> and it is just very, oh, wow. very loose. Yeah. And that's because it's dry rotted down yeah. here at the bottom. And so we're going to put a bracket in. Here's one right here. And it's dug down between uh, 18 and 19 inches. It fits up right next to the, uh, to the concrete ball that's down there. It goes over the top of it. And then we put that board that I just took off. We uh -huh. put the board back over that. You won't see a thing. So then is now the place where we pour the new concrete? Right now we attach the bracket. Okay. Then we fill it one third full of water, add the concrete, agitate it, really talk to it. Yeah. Yeah, get it upset. <laughs> and then um, and then you and let we'll go it from sit. there. Well yeah. let's take this step next, get this done, and then we'll come back and show you what else we're gonna do. Great. 
Okay, now Chuck, I see that you're leveling things up there. It's perfect. And it, it, this is in now, so tell me the steps that we went through from the concrete forward. Well, from, from first thing you have to do is you have to find the loose posts. Sure, sure. If they're leaning or broken, you have to find them, and it's like a six-year-old's loose tooth. Once it wiggles, <laughs> it's not going back, okay? <laughs> then what we do is we dig a hole, we come out six inches away from the post, dig it 18 or 19 inches deep, you put the bracket in, right on top of the old concrete ball so you don't have to dig that out. Yeah. You put 3 8 by 2 and a half inch lag screws in, pre-drill with a quarter inch drill, fill it one third full of water, add a bag of uh, concrete, uh, agitate it, get it going, and we're going to finish it off because it's still a little soupy, and you level it. And that's it. And then how long do you leave it with the brace on? One day, 24, One day, 24 hours. hours. Yeah, that's all it needs. And then I'm assuming you just put the soil back on and you said you could even put the fence plate cover yep. back on to hide the whole thing. That's what we will do nice. after we take the brace off. Nice. We'll put that uh, fence uh, the upright and just cover it all up. So now let's say I, I, I get these, I'm gonna do this. What if I have a couple of questions? Do you have a website I can go to and just- It's at stir-defense.com. Okay. sturdyfence.com. You can call me direct at 503-941-5228 and I'll answer the questions Perfect. for you. If I'm not there, I will return the phone call uh, that day. Well, there you go. Now listen, this can really, this is a great idea and it can save you a small fortune on redoing an entire fence when all you have is one broken fence post. So for more information, we always invite you to go to gardentime.tv. Yeah. We'll click you over to their website. Chuck, thank you so much, my thank friend. Thank you. I appreciate it, William. Let me get You're this gonna... glove off. I'm going <laughs> to shake your hand. Thank you, sir. Thank you for watching today, and don't forget to go out to Swan Island Dahlia's in the next two weekends to see the beautiful displays. And for more information on today's show or to see some past episodes, you can always go to Gardentime.tv. William and I thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week here on Garden Time. What are you looking for? Judy, I'm looking for the Garden Time Subaru. William, it's right behind us. <laughs> <laughs> and you can find it too. It's as easy as going to gardentime.tv. So click on gardentime.tv and click on the Subaru. Each month, the Subaru will be in a different location. Give us your best guess and you could possibly win. Each month, one lucky person will be chosen from all the correct answers. Prizes can include a gift card to a great nursery, some wonderful tools, or other sweet prizes. So go to Gardentime.tv and help us find the Subaru. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.